The Utah Jazz have been one of the best and most consistent teams in the NBA over the last five seasons. And coming off of their one-seeded campaign last season, they were entering this season looking to not only duplicate, but improve on that performance. However, since the dawn of the new year, the Jazz have fallen into a big-time slump, with them only winning four games in the month of January. Now, let's talk about the reason for their run of poor form, and how that will affect them not only for the rest of this season, but the future going forward. But guys, before we go any further, make sure to leave a like on this video, share with anybody you want to, and subscribe to my channel. I'll greatly appreciate any support you're willing to give. And also, if you're feeling up to it, make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and TikTok at Sportsbook Casually. I'll also greatly appreciate that as well. So now let's begin. Now coming into this season, the Jazz were coming off of two poor playoff performances in a row losing to the Clippers in the Western semifinals in six games despite Kawhi missing both Game 5 and Game 6. That collapse aside, the Jazz are still expected to be a force to be reckoned with in the West. I mean, they still had Donovan Mitchell, they had Rudy Gobert and Jordan Clarkson, both of which won Defensive Player of the Year and Six Man of the Year respectively last season. Not to mention, they still had Ingles, Bogdanovich, Conley and O'Neal all returning. So basically their main core is running it back. Not to mention their free agency additions of veterans Rudy Gay and Hassan Whiteside. So yeah, this team is a bit old but they have great chemistry with each other, they're very experienced and they're well coached which has kind of been, you know, the forte for the Jazz over the past few seasons. And at the start, things were looking pretty great for them. By the end of 2021, the Jazz were third in the West with a record of 26 and 9 which put them only two games back of the one-seeded Warriors at the time. But ever since the entire world entered 2022, the Jazz have been severely struggling. In January, they went 4-12, and and at the time I'm recording this video, they're now 4th in the West with a record of 30-21. and Now, while losing a bunch of games and going into a slump like this is very concerning, especially for a good team, I don't think it's indicative of the Jazz and their performance this season. Donovan Mitchell only played in half the games in January and missed the last seven games due to a concussion. And perhaps the most important reason why they slumped so much was because Rudy Gobert also missed time. Rudy only played in nine games in January and missed the last four due to a calf injury. Now we all know how important those two players are to Utah, especially Rudy Gobert on defense. I mean, it seems that their entire defensive scheme is to funnel everything to the paint and let Gobert shut that shit down. And when you're missing your two best players on your team who are both arguably top 20 in the league, it's going to cause your team to struggle, so there's no surprise there. One thing that his absence did point out was just how truly bad the Jazz perimeter defense is. I mean, let's be real, it was never really that good. But without Rudy Gobert there to clean up mistakes, it's been glaring how bad it's been. I mean, it's kind of expected they are mainly a bunch of older guys, but they really need to step it up on the perimeter. You can't just have Royce O'Neal be your only competent perimeter defender out there. Oh, also, shout out to my dog Royce O'Neal. He's by far my favorite role player in the entire league. He's having a great season on both ends of the court. Yeah, he does struggle guarding, you know, the quicker guards in the league, but I still love my dog, you know, so shout out to Royce O'Neal, accept my praise. Now, I know you're gonna lie, Tolia, I am not the best at breaking down certain nuances of perimeter defense, but this gentleman from SB Nation, whose name I will certainly butcher, so I'm not even gonna try to say it, did write a good article and some film breakdown of the struggles the Jazz are having guarding the perimeter and some certain miscommunications they're having. It was in their game when they played Cleveland. So I shall link to that article in the description below if you all want to get like a bet a clearer picture of what their struggles are exactly. But shout out to that guy, the article was amazing. Too many people surprised, Rudy Gobert does a lot more than just block shots in the paint. <laughs> Shocking, isn't it? I mean, he is the eraser. He has to erase all, if not most of the mistakes that his teammates make on defense. So he's not only doing his job, you know, his assignments, protecting the paint, 
Bodhi also has to cover and help correct some of the mistakes that his teammates make on the perimeter. And he's doing both that at a very elite level. So, yeah, he's more than just a shot-blocking big guy, you know? He's a fantastic defender. That's why he's won Defensive Player of the Year three times. And give the man his flowers. He's fantastic at what he does. So, yeah, the main reason why this team struggled so much in January was because of injuries. Besides Rudy and Mitchell, um, Ingles missed five games. You had Rudy Gay who missed four games. Um, O'Neal and Boyan both missed two games. So, yeah, this team has been pretty banged up. Losing streak aside now, I still have my concerns and doubts about this team. Uh, you and I both know the struggles that they've had in the playoffs over the last two seasons. Uh, I thought last year was their best chance of making it to the finals with them being the one seed and Kawhi missing the last two games of the series. But as we all know, that did not happen and they got bounced. And now it's kind of hard for me to see this team improving anymore with their current personnel. I mean, last season we saw them being top five in a lot of major statistical categories on both sides of the ball. And I honestly believe that they've reached their potential with this current lineup, with this current team. I mean, just think about it. Ingles is now out for the rest of the season, but before he picked up his injury, he massively regressed. Jordan Clarkson's efficiency also took a step back this season, and Donovan Mitchell's threes aren't going in as efficiently as they were last season. But I mean, there are still bright sides on this team. Uh, Boyan is remaining consistent. Conley is super efficient despite the smaller role he's playing on the team. Not to mention, the free agency additions of Hassan Whiteside and Rudy Gay have been contributing nicely to the team. But you know what all of those players have in common? All four of them are over the age of 31. Boyan and Hassan are both going to be 33 by the time the season's finished, and Conley and Gay are both 34 and 35 respectively. Really, Donovan Mitchell is the only young guy on this team that is locked up long term and is getting good minutes. Uh, Clarkson and Rudy Gobert are going to be 30 by the end of the season and O'Neal is going to be 29 soon. So yeah, it's kind of hard for me to see this team being a contender for much longer. Their window is closing and closing quickly. Now, don't get me wrong. This team is still super solid from top to bottom. They excel in the pick and roll. They aren't too ISO heavy, which I really love. And they're always willing to make that extra pass to find an open teammate for a better shot. But I still do have a lot of concerns about this team. Mainly, I don't think that they're hustling enough. I don't think that they try to create a lot of turnovers. Um, they struggle to score on the fast break. And this team does kind of turn the ball over a little too much for my liking. And they give up easy points that way. That to go along with their poor perimeter defense just doesn't make me as confident in this team as I was at the beginning of this season. And going forward, it's just going to get a lot harder. You know, this old core is just going to keep on getting older and a lot of them are locked up long term on some decently big contracts. Really, the only expiring you have this entering this offseason is Joe Ingles. And I don't think they're going to bring him back, especially after that injury. Not to mention, this team is already in the luxury tax, and they would already be in the luxury tax next season after they fill out their roster. But this is the risk that the front office took when they gave Rudy Gobert the Supermax and gave Mitchell the Max rookie extension. Not to mention re-signing Mike Conley. And hey, I honestly get it. They had something special here, and they really wanted to capitalize on it. And that brings us to where we are right now. They've come so far. Too far to turn back now. So, when you're too far to turn back, there's only really one thing you could do. You got to see it through, my boy. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think about the Utah Jazz and their season so far and their big slump that they took in January. You know, let me know all about your thoughts in the comments below. And Utah fans, I have a question for you guys. If this team, God forbid, does not meet your expectations in the postseason, would you consider or would you like to see them blow it up and rebuild? And if you would like to see them rebuild, when would you like to see that happen? Would it be in this offseason or would it be in the 2023 offseason? I would love to know what you guys think about your team and where you see the future happening or where you see them going in the future in my comments below. 
But guys, that is the end of this video. As I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I shall see you for the next video. You guys stay safe. Later.